Good morning. My name is Berkeley Bennett, and I'm the commander of the Hamptons American Legion Post 35. And on behalf of our 300 members, I would like to thank each of you for joining us this morning to honor our nation's heroes. At this time, I'd like to invite Reverend Mike Gelsimini of the United Church of Christ in Northampton to lead us in an invocation. Please bow your heads. Let us be together in the spirit of prayer. Holy One, we gather this morning to remember those who are resting in your peace, those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy the freedom we have today. This is a special sacred time, a time filled with honor, respect, and reverence. It is a time not only to remember those men and women who have died, but to remember the family members that they have left behind, fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, friends, and loved ones. They are part of the sacrifice. Comfort them, O God. Wipe away their tears and grant them peace. Holy One, bless our time together this morning and make it holy. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Mike. At this time, I'd like to invite Dasha Piotrowski, senior at Winter Conant High School and Northampton's own, to plead, please lead us in the national anthem. Detail, a 10, hut, present, arms. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Order. Thank you, Dasha. At this time, I'd like to recognize our veterans. Will all of our Army veterans please raise your hand? Navy veterans. <laughs> veterans of the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Air Force. <laughs> Coast Guard. <laughs> Wartime Merchant Mariners. Now our first responders are police and firefighters. At this time, I'd like to recognize our Korean War era veterans, Korea. Vietnam. Conflicts from 1975 to 1991. Operation Desert Storm. <laughs> Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. <laughs> and on the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, our World War II veterans. Daddies. 
Memorial Day is a time we, we pause to remember the men and women of our armed forces who died while serving our country. Folks usually think of those who died in battle and whose remains were brought home for burial, the graves marked with a military gravestone. But today I want to touch on a category that many people don't often think about, our MIAs, the missing in action. This year is the 160th anniversary of the start of the Civil War. The Civil War was the bloodiest, most devastating conflict in American history. With improved weapon accuracy and fighting techniques, there were one and a half million casualties on both sides, with over 620,000 soldiers killed. One in four never came home. And bullets and cannonballs were not the only killers. For every three men killed in battle, another five died of disease. At the infamous Camp Sumter, a Confederate prisoner war camp in Andersonville, Georgia, of the 45,000 Union prisoners held there, over 13,000 died of disease and malnutrition. Neither side was prepared for the amount of carnage the war would bring. There were no grave registration units attached to the armies. There were no formal identification badges like dog tags. No official way of notifying the next of kin. In fact, many times before a major battle, the soldier would scribble his identifying information on a piece of paper and pin it to his uniform. For the Union forces, it was the unit's commanding officer who was responsible for burying the dead. The problem was that after the battle, casualties often included the commanding officer, and other survivors may have been wounded, malnourished, or too fatigued to carry out the task. Many times the fallen were hastily buried in shallow graves, and often the bodies of those killed would remain on the battlefield for days before they were buried. The cumulative effect of all this was that half of those killed in the war were never identified. Tens of thousands of families were left not knowing how their loved one died or where they were buried. Thousands of Union soldier graves remained unrecorded and unmarked throughout the South. After the war, U.S. Quartermaster General Montgomery Meigs ordered an assessment of all these Union grave sites. He dispatched units of the Union Army that searched for these grave sites and started what became a massive, federally supported reinterment program. Ultimately, over 300,000 were buried in what became the National Cemetery System. In more recent memory, the issue of our missing service members became the focus of the National League of Families of American prisoners and missing in Southeast Asia. The group was formed by Sybil Stockdale, wife of Navy Commander James Stockdale, whose A-4 was shot down over North Vietnam in 1965. She was determined to make the American people aware of the plight of our POWs and force the American government to change its official policy on the POWs and MIAs and acknowledge the mistreatment of our prisoners at the hands of the North Vietnamese. The group called for the humane treatment of POWs in the accordance with the Geneva Convention and also urged that the bodies of those who died in captivity be returned to their families. In 1971, group member Mary Helen Hoff, wife of Navy Commander Michael Hoff, who went missing after his A-7 crash in Laos, recognized the need for a symbol of their cause to help engage the American public. She contacted the Annan Flag Company with her request, and what came from her idea is the POW MIA flag. Another symbol of the plight of our captured missing service members was the POW MIA bracelet. The brainchild of a group of college students, the bracelets had a service member's name, rank, and the date they were captured or went missing. The bracelet was to be worn until the service member came home or the remains were returned to this country. These symbols kept the memory of our prisoners and missing in the public eye during Vietnam so that they weren't forgotten. Even today, 50 years later, the POW MIA flag remains an important symbol, reminding us never to forget about those service members captured or missing. In 2019, the National POW MIA Flag Act was signed into law, requiring the flag to be flown on certain federal properties on all days that the American flag is flown. And last month, 
in response to a bipartisan effort, including New Hampshire's own Senator Hassan, the POW MIA flag has been returned to its rightful place atop the White House. At the end of the Vietnam War, 591 prisoners were released in 1973 during Operation Homecoming. At that time, the United States listed 2,646 Americans as unaccounted for during the war. Since then, thanks to the dedicated work of the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency and the commitment of the federal government, the remains of over 1,000 Americans killed in Vietnam have been returned home to their families. The search continues. However, the remote jungle terrain surrounding many of the crash sites and a tropical environment in Southeast Asia hinder the recovery of many of our missing to this day. As of this month, 1,584 Americans remain unaccounted for from the Vietnam War. So as we enjoy what is the unofficial start of the summer season, please take a moment to remember those who served and died for our country. It is because of their ultimate sacrifice that we can enjoy our lives in freedom in the greatest country in the world. Commander Stockdale returned to the U.S. after the war and was awarded the Medal of Honor for its conspicuous gallantry as a senior naval officer in the POW camps in North Vietnam. He retired in 1979 at the rank of, rear, of uh, Vice Admiral. Mary Helen Hoff, the lady with the idea for the MIA POW flag, she died in 2015, never knowing the fate of her husband. Commander Hoff is still listed as missing. His remains have not been recovered. Think of him and all of our missing service members and their families whenever you see that black and white flag. At this time, I'd like to invite Reverend Mike Gelsimini to offer a benediction. Please bow your heads. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this time set, us, set apart, this time of remembering and honoring. May it not end here. May we not take our freedoms for granted, our freedom to worship you in our own ways, our freedom to assemble, our freedom of speech. As we are sitting at our barbecues later today, or as we are driving to the beach, may we remember those who have made that possible. Not just today, but every day that we are free. When we think of those whom we have lost and the sacrifices they made, may it prompt us to work towards ways of peace, towards ways that will bring people and nations together so that one day we may all indeed live in peace. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. At this time, we'll have a wreath placed in honor of our fallen heroes by Gunnery Sergeant Mike McDonald, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Detail, a 10, hut. At this time, we will have the conflicts read by Wayne Vetter, Sergeant, United States Army, Vietnam, and a bell tolled by Jonathan Rogers, Lieutenant, United States Navy, Operation Enduring Freedom.
Civil War. World War One. World War Two. Korean War. Vietnam. America's wars and conflict from 1975 to 1992. Desert Storm. Operation Iraqi Freedom. Operation Enduring Freedom. Detail Artan Hut. Present Arms. Firing party, salute the fallen. Order, arms. I'd like to thank Reverend Gelsomini, Dasha Piotrowski, Dan Rowell, Gunnery Sergeant Mike McDonald, Jonathan Rogers, Wayne Vetter. I'd like to say a special thank you to John Savastano and his team who outfitted us here today. Always doing an outstanding professional job and we appreciate it, thank you. Thank you to all our scouts. Thanks to the Post 35 Firing Party and Color Guard. Thank you to our state representatives, Northampton Selectman and Town Manager Mike Tully and other dignitaries. Thanks to the Northampton Police and Fire Departments. A special thank you to all our veterans. This concludes our ceremony this morning. There's no parade in Hampton, only a ceremony at the High Street Cemetery at 11 a.m. May God bless and keep our fallen heroes. May God bless and protect the service men and women of our armed forces. May God bless and protect the United States of America. Thank you. Good job, man. Good, good job. That's right. That's right.